nice to see you all, and uh, it's always good to be in Dr. Nesbury's house. So thank you. Yeah, yeah. Um, good to see you all, and this is an exciting project, and it is an exciting day, and um, who knows what's going to happen, but uh, it's, it's going to be a day that most of us remember for a long time. It's going to impact a lot of us, right, Dr. Spray? <laughs> so, um, Vondi had asked me to, in addition to uh, having the privilege of introducing Dr. Van Dyke, um, she asked me to do a reflection, which is <clears throat> um, something that we do at uh, Trinity Health. It's one of our customs, and it's a great opportunity to sort of center ourselves and to sort of uh, bring us all together and focus our attentions on what we're about to do. And uh, it's a, it was a bit of a challenge to me thinking about what would be an appropriate reflection for this group, for this topic. And uh, just a week ago, I was asked to speak to our graduates of our residency programs at Mercy Health Partners. And as I think about this project, Healthy Grad, and all the components that have to go into it to make it a positive experience and to, to bring students along and have them gather skills, acquire skills, and uh, give them aspiration for their lives and the attention and focus that will be brought to them. Uh, it made me think about what I shared with our, with our residents. And uh, just kind of a brief, a brief synopsis, you know, I'd asked the group, and these were, <clears throat> these were, uh, the audience was medical students, but graduates of our residency programs and their trainers mostly, and some of the spouses and guests and, and that sort of thing. But I started out by asking them the question, I said, how many of you really expected to be here? It was your... It was your aspiration, you know. You, are you surprised to be here? And um, and a few of them kind of nudged each other. Said, yeah, I'm surprised you're here. Uh, <laughs> but but uh, you know, and some of the spouses said, Yeah, I you know I never expected to be here. But but you know, really the point about that is, and I'm speaking to a room of people who've who've had. As I look around the room and I and I see recognize many faces, I there have been tremendous accomplishments. And, and tremendous input into what the fabric of this community is, what it is today. And, and you're still actively making a huge difference in our community. And, um, and so the, the point about my question was, yeah, most of you are not surprised to be here because you intended to be here. It was your goal, it was your, your intention to be here. And you sacrificed and you made deliberate decisions and you put yourself on a path that led you to here today. And, you know, the other thing is this isn't the end of the path. This is just one point along the path. But you're definitely on a path. And, and I shared with them <clears throat> this uh, concept of the, the principle of the path. And the principle of the path has biblical uh, undertones to it. It really does. There's a lot of support in, uh, in the ancient wisdom of the Bible, the ancient and still relevant wisdom of the Bible. And um, the, the notion, and, and again, just like uh, many principles, you don't have to understand them completely to believe that they're true, to know that it's true. And I, and I said, you know, you don't, you don't have to understand gravity to know that it works. You know, it's going to work every time. You don't have to understand it, but, uh, or even believe in it. But the principle of the path says, whatever you give your attention to determines your direction. And your direction determines your destination. So, and, and I gave the example, if we were going to all decide to go to Florida after this meeting, and we went home and packed our shorts and our suntan lotion and and uh, you know everything that we needed to have for our vacation and we we met here and we caravanned out to US 31 and we headed north on US 31 and just driving because we're going to Florida you know we're all excited are we ever gonna make it I mean maybe eventually we'll make it but we headed in what the wrong direction 
we were on the wrong path to go to Florida, even though our intention was to go to Florida. But our direction was wrong. So you have to have not only the intention, but you have to have the attention and the direction right in order to reach your destination. And, and so I think what we're talking about today is about having the, giving attention to the right things and having the intention but also the direction to end up at the destination we desire for the students that we're supporting. I, I shared another principle that I think many of you are familiar with and that's the principle of the law of the harvest. The law of the harvest. I don't know if we have any farmers here but but uh, you don't have to be a farmer to understand the law of the harvest. And you've all heard you reap what you sow, right? That's, that's common. We reap what we sow. But the law of the harvest has a couple of other principles to it. You know, if we plant, if we plant apple seeds or watermelon seeds, we know what we're going to get. We, we understand that. We know what we're going to get. If you, um, there's no surprise. There's no surprise to that. What you put into something impacts the result and what you expect to get out of it. The other principle is you reap later than you sow. There's a sense of deferred gratification. Things don't come to us instantly. We have to work, we have to prepare, and, uh, and so we reap la uh, you know, later than we sow. And then the third thing, which is kind of multiplication, it's investment and return on investment, and that is you reap more than you sow. You don't just get one apple if you plant an apple seed. If you do it right, you get a whole tree full of apples. And so there's great opportunity, there's great return on investment potential for what we're doing. And, uh, and I, I have many more things I could share, but I'm not the speaker this morning. Um, but, uh, but, it, <laughs> but there's, but wellness, you know, wellness and, and is something that is so important because of its, its potential to, it's exponential. And if you don't have wellness, if you don't have well-being, then what, what we learn is a very little benefit, very little value. And so it's wonderful to bring all of these concepts together. And our speaker this morning, Judy Willem, Ju, excuse me, Julie Williams Van Dyke, and um, you know we haven't talked, but you know her her last the spelling of her last name is uh, truly the Dutch version, I think, of Van Dyke, and that's that's wonderful. You stuck to the original. Um, Lodi would be very happy about that. <laughs> yes, yeah. So good for you. But uh, she is an RN and she has her doctorate as well and, and I, as I read her resume and, and it looks like you've been a lifelong resident of Wisconsin and, and uh, been very involved in many aspects of not only public life but also clinical life and it's a wonderful combination of, of clinical skills and clinical experience as well as research so wonderful wonderful way to bring these skills together but, but um, University of Wisconsin uh, product and uh, I was a former uh, exercise physiologist in uh, University of Wisconsin La Crosse. So, you know, part of the system, you know. Right, we have right. the handshake and all that. But, um, <laughs> but uh, Dr. Van Dyke is the deputy director of the Robert Wood Johnson funded County Needs Roadmap Project. And uh, um, so I'm just very excited to hear what she has to say. And, and this notion of population health, it's the Population Health Institute. Any of us in the health field know that that's definitely, not sure exactly what the destination, but that is the direction that we're going. The, the system can't survive without figuring out how to manage the health of populations. And so, so I'm very excited to, uh, to welcome her. She's a graduate of the Robert Wood Johnson Nurse Executive Fellows Program in the National Public Health Leadership Institute. She uh, has a wonderful resume, and I'm so anxious for us to hear what Dr. Van Dyke has to say to us. Please join me in welcoming Dr. Van Dyke. 